Day one of free agency in the books. Let's take a look at the moves the Houston Texans did and didn't make. Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans and let's break down free agency day one. The four big takeaways from day one. If you were expecting big notable names to end up on the Houston Texans, well, heck, you were very disappointed at the end of day one. A couple of nice players for the Texans, a couple of depth players, but no big notable names showing up for the Texans. Let's get into the four big takeaways from day one of free agency for the Houston Texans. And we start with number one, the total and utter running back disappointment by the Texans in day one. This team has got to run the football better in 2024, and they've got to improve the talent to do that. They were 23rd in total yards in 2023. They were 29th in yards per carry last season. They've got to run the football much better than they did last year, and they've got to improve the talent to do that. Only Damian Pierce is on this roster that played any sort of significant snaps for them last year, and the team showed you with the way they operated at the end of the season they don't believe in Damian Pierce to that level. So what do most of us want them to do? Sign some running backs or sign a big-time running back in free agency. DeAndre Swift came off the board early, and then he was followed by Tony Pollard and Josh Jacobs. It became apparent the Texans weren't in on those players as much because they were chasing Saquon Barkley. Multiple reports that the Texans were going back and forth and in a bidding war with the Philadelphia Eagles for Saquon Barkley. Ultimately, the Eagles, who started the day with $20 million less than the Texans in cap space, they win the bidding war for Saquon Barkley. The Czech Texans tapped out at three years and $33 million total at $11 million average. Barkley ultimately got three years and about $38 million from the Eagles with a chance to make a little bit more if he hits incentives and he picked Philly in large part he's not he's far he's not far from there when he where he grew up he went to Penn State he gets to play the Giants twice but you could have made the money work and you could have incentivized Saquon Barkley to pass up those things if you paid him enough money ultimately the Texans didn't get that done and I mentioned those three running backs that you could have been interested in if you didn't get Saquon Barkley that came off the board. So no Josh Jacobs, no Tony Pollard, no DeAndre Swift. They lose Saquon Barkley. Then shortly after that, Antonio Gibson's off the board. And then the heart punch, Devin Singletary comes off the board, goes to the Giants to replace Saquon Barkley for a deal that's three years less than $20 million in total for the entire contract. And the Texans are left with lesser and lesser options than Zach Moss, Gus Edwards, Austin Eckler get signed. And now the Texans are sitting here with just Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry as the notable free agent names at the time of this recording. Now, look, you could still have Derrick Henry, Eric, Aaron Jones, maybe both of those guys in the fold, and you would certainly increase the talent that you have right now in the running back room. But it would have been nice to have one of those more notable names and one of those more reliable names for a team that has to improve the rushing attack. That's, to me, the biggest disappointment from day one of free agency and the biggest takeaway, that they messed up the pursuit of a running back and improving this running back room. The free agents that are there, there's still a couple of them that are notable that maybe the Texans would be in on. There's still a couple that you can chase, but it's not as good as some of the names that are already on other teams because they signed in free agency. And the draft, not going to help you this year. It's one of the weaker running back classes. Plus, even if you had a strong running back class and you wanted to draft one, say, in the second round, do you feel confident with Damian Pierce and a rookie running back as the players of note for this team heading into 2024 at the running back spot? I don't think so. Big takeaway number one, the Texans messed up the pursuit of running back and did not get what they needed to get in day one of free agency. Let's see if day two is a little bit better for them. Speaking of two, number two in the big takeaways, good walks for a couple of Texans players. Blake Cashman and Jonathan Grenard both headed up north to the Minnesota Vikings. Cashman gets a deal that is three years just over $25 million, and then Jonathan Grenard gets the huge deal. Four years, $76 million, $42 million guaranteed for a $19 million a year average 
annual value. It's a great deal for Jonathan Grenard. The Vikings didn't really build in any protection for themselves if the injuries that Grenard has dealt with in his career pop back up. I was comfortable with Grenard at about $15, $16 million a year. So when that number gets up to $19 million a year, it's fine for me that the Texans let Jonathan Grenard walk in free agency. Cashman, the number got big. Plus, he's from Minnesota. He went to the University of Minnesota. I got to imagine that it felt pretty good for him to go back up there where he's from, a place that he really likes. And he got a lot more money than I expected him to get. Uh, ultimately, the Texans end up upgrading at linebacker by the end of the day. Those are the two big notable walks in addition to Devin Singletary. Not missing Jonathan Grenard, good for him. Not missing Blake Cashman, good for him. Missing Devin Singletary a little bit. And then Cameron Johnston left for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they replaced him with Tommy Townsend, who was an All-Pro in 2022. Um, was not as good statistically as Cameron Johnston in 2023, but well thought of amongst league circles. So nothing too crazy from a walk standpoint with most of the players that have left the Texans to this point in day one. It made sense to let Grenard go for that amount of money. It made sense for Blake Cashman to go for that amount of money. And it's in the pursuit of replacing those guys that we get to number three, a couple of solid pieces added by the end of the day. Look, it was not fun sitting around and the Texans do nothing, do nothing, do nothing, lose Saquon. They're not in on Christian Wilkins, which I wasn't a fan of Christian Wilkins, but I understand a lot of people were a fan. And good player after good player after notable player comes off the board. But by the end of the day, the Texans had a couple of nice players under contract. To help replace Jonathan Grenard, who had 13 sacks last year, they added Danico Autry, defensive lineman from the Tennessee Titans, who had 11 and a half sacks last year. I called Danico Autry Super Jerry Hughes because he's going to be the same age this upcoming season as Hughes was when he got to the Texans a couple of years ago, but he's been more productive in the couple of years coming to the Texans and certainly coming off an 11 and a half sack season. That's a nice investment. Two years, $20 million for Autry. He's got a little defensive tackle ability to him, got some defensive end ability to him. Not totally settled at defensive end, but that was a nice, well done move by the Texans to add some pass rush prowess from a big veteran in free agency. And then to upgrade at the linebacker spot, Aziz Al Shire. He is a player that played for D'Amico Ryans in San Francisco. The Texans chased him a year ago, ultimately losing out in free agency to the Tennessee Titans. And then Aziz Al Shire ends up on the Texans this year. Big money, okay? Three years, $34 million for him. So just over $11 million a year on the commitment. But this guy is really good. Fifth in tackles in the NFL last year. He can stuff the run. He's not a liability in coverage. He's athletic enough to go out there and be in coverage. He and Christian Harris make a really, really interesting, really interesting duo when it comes to the linebacker spot for this Texans team. I'm excited to watch Al Shire play for this team, reunite with D'Amico Ryans. He's a good player. He's got a knowledge of the system. There's a lot to like about him. Those are the two big notables as far as the additions go for the Texans. So again, some solid additions throughout the course of the evening. We mentioned Tommy Towns and the punter to replace Cameron Johnston leaving. Jeff Okuda is signed a one-year deal worth up to $6 million. He's going to be the starting cornerback opposite Derek Stingley more than likely. Okuda's 25 years old, a former number three overall pick. This is his third team in the NFL. It didn't go well in Detroit. It was a little bit better in Atlanta. He's got to play better. You got to imagine that this staff looks at Okuda and thinks they can unlock something with him, but he's a nice player at the cornerback spot. And again, I would think the investment in Okuda means they're not bringing back Steven Nelson, but it doesn't keep them from drafting a cornerback in the first, second, or third round if they feel like they like one of those corners dropping to them where they pick in the first, second, third, heck, even the fourth round. Okuda doesn't keep you from making any sort of investment. And if he plays well in the course of the 2024 season, heck, it's November. Nick Casario talks to his agent. Boom, next thing you know, Okuda's sticking around for a couple of more years. A couple of special teams additions, Michael Ford 
And Lonnie Johnson, yes, that Lonnie Johnson, they're added for special teams depth. Nice players on special teams. Uh, I don't know that you need a ton of special teams guys, uh, but it was not fun watching those guys get signed while all the big names were coming off. Ultimately, not everybody's going to be a big name or a productive name. And the Texans also brought back Noah Brown. Brown is a guy that I'd be shocked if he and Robert Woods are on the roster again. Uh, but he's a player that if he's the third wide receiver, that's a pretty decent situation. If he's your fourth wide receiver, man, that's a pretty solid wide receiver room if he's the fourth best wide receiver on your team. And if Noah Brown ends up as the fifth best wide receiver on the Texans, my goodness, is that a fun situation for the Texans? That would mean that they've added somebody else in free agency or they drafted somebody that they really like. But Noah Brown – a depth piece at wide receiver, had a couple of really nice standout games for the Texans, obviously knows the system. C.J. Stroud trusts him. The offensive staff trusts him. He does a lot of the dirty work at the wide receiver spot. I would think it's probably him versus Robert Woods with one veteran remaining on the team. I'd give Noah Brown the inside track on that one just a little bit, but hey, it's only March. We're talking about July stuff. We still got free agency to get to. We still got a fourth takeaway to get to if you're disappointed. If you're disappointed with where the Texans are right now in free agency, I'm here to tell you it can still end up being a really fun free agency class for the Texans. There's still some really intriguing and interesting players out there and some players that fit the Houston Texans. Look, Daniil Hunter is an incredibly interesting prospect, defensive end slash edge rusher slash outside linebacker, whatever you want to call him for the Vikings over the past few seasons. He was the top guy in free agency when it comes to sacks. He was phenomenal for the Vikings last year. I'm surprised he didn't get signed on day one. So headed into day two as free agency goes on, he's a name to pay attention to for the Texans. Maybe there's some interest there. He's not totally the exact traditional thing that D'Amico Ryans usually does with his defensive ends, but hey, big time pass rusher that can get after the quarterback, check in on him. Eric Armstead, defensive tackle who played for the San Francisco 49ers. He's still out there. That's a guy that's intriguing from that standpoint. We mentioned the running backs, Derrick Henry and Aaron Jones at the time of recording here that are intriguing running backs from a veteran standpoint that you could add to the room that would start over Damian Pierce. And then the Texans checked in, according to reports out of Jacksonville, on Calvin Ridley. So maybe there's a wide receiver to be added from that standpoint, checking in on Calvin Ridley, maybe Hollywood Brown. If the money comes down, just two wide receivers change teams on the first day of free agency. So that wide receiver market depressed a little bit uh, in large part because it's such a deep rookie wide receiver class. Of course, if you take care of your business before the draft, you don't have to worry about certain players making it to you in the draft. And then you can sort of draft with a little bit of luxury when you get there. But Big takeaway number four is if you're disappointed with this class, it can still end up being a really nice free agency class. The Texans have some options still there to make it an impressive group. Those are the four big takeaways. Every little bit of free agency is broken down on my site, Houston Football. The link's in the description down below. Check it out, www.houfootball.com come over 1500 words on day one of free agency so if you want the full complete and total breakdown of everything that occurred on day one of free agency when it comes to the houston texans houston football is where you can find it we wanted to get you the four big takeaways here on this video appreciate everybody that showed up for the day one live stream over six hours breaking down the day one action live here on youtube we've got so much more fun stuff planned for you on YouTube. I appreciate everybody stopping by. I appreciate the thumbs ups on the video, the subscriptions to the channel. I'm glad you watched the video to this point. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait for so much more Texans conversation. And I can't wait till we talk Texans again soon.